them blood fiend. Suck the people dry. Took all the blood out. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Look at me, look at me. This week we're looking at two films. Roger Corman's Not of This Earth. I'm sure I don't think anything, Mr. Johnson. And Roger Corman's Not of This Earth. I'm sure I don't think anything, Mr. Johnson. 1957's Not of This Earth is a pretty standard, low-budget sci-fi. Your observation is correct. The plot follows Nurse Nadine, who is hired to look after the mysterious Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, that's a very personal question. Who turns out to be an alien. You mean the boss is some kind of man from Mars? Collecting human blood and sending it home via a floating head. Time narrows. There is death upon Devana. To transfuse his dying species. <laughs> There's the requisite 50s dialogue. Don't be a drag. You know how you flip me. I'm hip. The requisite anti-communist message. It was a foreign thing come here to destroy us. And, because it's written by Weirdness King, Charles B. Griffith, there's also a killer alien umbrella. Uh... It's cheap, predictable, and the dialogue is occasionally woeful. My eyes are alien. Look at them. I think we've discussed this sufficiently. But we probably wouldn't bother with it if not for one thing. I think we've discussed that sufficiently. In 1988, Jim Wynorski bet that he could remake the film for the same budget, inflation adjusted, and Corman produced the remake. I choose not to reveal a reason. They seem to have decided that the cheapest way to do this was to copy the original. Like, shot for shot. Line for line. Oh, no, he's having a fast pine on the fly. No test. No, no, he's having a fast pine on the fly. No test. Oversized costume for oversized costume. Where'd you pick up the cop? How many times I gotta tell you not to take the car till you know how to drive? And even meal for meal. <laughs> and it's not just the 57 version that's giving you a sense of deja vu. <laughs> humanoids from the deep and I don't mean this is a similar scene they're reusing the footage and then cunningly changing the actress for the last shot <laughs> elsewhere hey but you're freaking me out come on what the <laughs> that's Hollywood Boulevard it is soon that we shall all perish galaxy of terror <laughs> The opening credits are a montage of eight different Roger Corman films. Okay, okay, lighten up. Worse still, Wynorski cuts the alien umbrella. Your observation is correct. And the floating head has become a refugee from an 80s soft rock band. Time narrows, there is death upon Devana. So, did he add anything worth seeing? It's a rather personal question, isn't it? Tracy Lords was a porn star looking to break into the mainstream, so a film for Roger Corman was a step up. On the other hand... But it's not exactly something someone looks forward to with giddy anticipation either. But at least she doesn't have to deal with that dodgy porn dialogue. You know I like a copper whose pistol's always fully loaded. <laughs> this is the same film, but with added sex. This whole thing has the sound of something very unethical. So Nadine's swimming costume goes from this to this. The big doll house are busting out again. The cheesy dialogue. Hey, I've got a hook and line inside. Maybe I ought to go get it, huh? huh. I'm afraid, Jeremy, you just haven't got the right bait. Gets an extra line added. I'm afraid you just haven't got the right bait, Jeremy. Shouldn't say things like that until you've seen the size of my fishing pole. In the 57, Mr. Johnson meets three gentlemen. Those aren't gentlemen, those are bums. In the 88. <laughs> Baby. Oh, nice. ah. He meets three women. Women, they're not women, boss. They're hookers. In the 88, Mr. Johnson transports to his home planet a strippogram who came to the wrong house. I have brought the specimen. She is typical of the Earth subhumans. In the 57, it's a Chinese man he bumped into on the street. I have brought the specimen. 
and the opening scene of the couple parking. Here, if my father dug this scene, he put small round holes in your head. Suddenly gets a lot heavier. I said not here. I didn't say not there. This was the last time Tracy Lords agreed to appear topless, so she was clearly uncomfortable with it. I'll pack your clothing. But you won't need it. There is an air of gratuitousness that hangs over this movie. Infantile attitude, Doctor. On the other hand, intentionally or not, it is occasionally hilarious. I will be dining out. That's got to be intentional. Better get an ophthalmologist. Yeah, someone get this corpse at eye doctor. And you can't take a little joke? But they save the biggest joke for last. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not so sure. OK, this time it worked out a bit sleazy, but is there a classic-era cult film that would benefit from a sexed-up remake? Leave us your sexy ideas in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and remember, if you're watching this without subscribing, you're essentially a thief. Night-night, Jeremy, sweet dreams.